I'm going to start by the anatomy of the cornea. The cornea is the transparent part of the outer coat. It is continuous with the sclera at the limbus. Through the cornea, we can see the iris and the pupil. So here, the cornea, and this is the limbus. And here we can see the sclera covered by the transparent conjunctiva. This is the diameter of the cornea. And the cornea has a thickness of half millimeter in the center and one millimeter toward the limbus. Light coming from external world will pass through the cornea then through the lens to get focus on the retina. The cornea is a very strong plus lens of a power plus 42, while the crystalline lens has a power of only 18. So the cornea make up two thirds of the total optical power of the eye. The central part of the cornea has a radius of curvature of 7.8. The second layer is the Bowman's membrane. It is the most external layer of the stroma. If there is some injury to the Bowman's membrane, a permanent opacity will be there. Then comes the stroma or the substantia propria is formed of collagen fibers, especially arranged and compact, and in between the fibers we get the keratocytes, the corneal cells, and also we have a wandering white BCs. On the back of the cornea, we have the dysmus membrane and the endothelium. The endothelium of the cornea cannot regenerate. As you see, the cornea is transparent while the sclera is opaque. Why that? The cornea is transparent because it's formed of fibers of uniform size running parallel to the surface and the fibers in one lamina is perpendicular to the fibers in the next lamina. Also, if this special arrangement is lost, as in case if we have has hazard arrangement of the fibers, then we get an opaque surface like the sclera, or if it occurs in the cornea, we get an opacity in the cornea. The second factor for transparency is that the water content of the cornea is only 70%. This is a relative dehydration of the cornea compared to the tear film and the aqueous humor. Both the tear film and the aqueous humor are almost 100% water. On the other hand, the cornea is only 70%. This is important to keep the cornea transparent, to keep the layers compact. To understand this, here, an example of corneal edema, you notice the cornea is thickened in the center and it is bluish. This is the normal cornea and this is an edematous hazy cornea. If you see here the view, all this part of the cornea, we get some haziness. On the other hand, everything is perfect here. To understand why the cornea becomes cloudy with the edema, let's have this example. This is the external atmosphere. This is the atmosphere of the Earth. As you can see here, this part looks bluish because rays coming from the sun, the blue end of the spectrum, is reflected reaching to the photo lens. So this part is blue. On the other hand, this part of the skies is white because the reflection includes the whole spectrum. This part has no 
teller at all because there is no scatter of the rays from this zone so to see anything we need rays scatter into our eyes or into the camera when the scatter is on the blue end of the spectrum we see blue when the scatter of the whole spectrum we see white when there is no scatter we don't see anything now in the eye rays coming from outside pass through the cornea into the eye almost most of the rays get inside the eye but we have some scatter here to reach to our eyes so we can see there is a cornea the amount of rays coming here is minimal but it includes the whole spectrum so we see it grayish if there is edema then the blue end of the spectrum also will be scattered in great amounts so the amount of light getting inside is less and there will be haziness so we cannot see through the cornea so the cornea to be transparent we need the layers of the cornea to be compact to avoid the scatter back of the rays the scatter back usually start by affecting the short waves but if the edema is more and more the whole spectrum will be scattered back and the cornea will turn toward the white appearance the cornea is protected anteriorly by the epithelium and posteriorly by the endothelium both act as a mechanical barrier preventing water from getting inside also the endothelium on the back surface all the time is doing what we call a sodium pump it takes sodium from the stroma toward push it toward the anterior chamber and water was follow so that's why the cornea become of a less water content if there is endothelial damage the cornea will turn opaque this is some examples of endothelial damage also the cornea is transparent because of absence of opaque structures a normal cornea has no vessels blood is opaque so if there is vascularization of the cornea it will turn opaque also the epithelium of the cornea is non-keratinized keratin is opaque so if, this is an example of a severe dry eye and the epithelium on the cornea and the conjunctiva is keratinized and we get an opaque cornea so these are the factors that will make the cornea transparent. Thank you.